should. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, topic 15. Uh, 16 topics for OCR GCSE Business Studies Unit 1. Uh, business aims and objectives. If you're following this on the core text, uh, page 113, we'll uh, let you follow that as we go through. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, first slide is quite an important difference. Um, and it asks the question, what is the difference between an aim and an objective? Uh, well, to me, as the arrow points out, the, uh, the aim is the long-term plan. Uh, when I say long-term, I mean five to ten years. Uh, so that's the aim. So it shows everybody where we're going, <coughs> normally a director level focus. Whereas objectives are the short-term goals that help us to achieve our long-term plan. The short-term goals are normally one year short term goals and a business is not generally going to have more than three or four short term goals to achieve that long term aim. I've put a few examples there of short term goals uh, and that's uh, no more than minimising uh, costs, maximising sales with the view to maximising profit uh, but also don't forget customer service is king so let's make sure our customers are happy in the process. Um, there might be a couple of two mark questions saying what is a business objective? Uh, so you need to make sure you're pretty secure with that. And there might also be a two mark question saying what is a business mission statement? Uh, as I've already said, businesses normally have uh, two or three, maybe even four objectives each year, no more than that. Uh, the objectives themselves do vary depending on the size of the organisation and what that business does and where that business is situated. Uh, normally, uh, a multinational company PLC uh, such as Vodafone will have different business objectives to the local shop. Uh, PLCs normally look at market share and growing their market share, whereas a local shop is looking at beating its profit year on year and in the first year maybe surviving. Uh, it is possible that companies like British Home Stores, for instance, might default to survival if they hit rocky roads and grounds as they've done recently in the short term. Uh, and if we look also, uh, it's, um, it's quite common sense for people, businesses, to summarise all of those objectives uh, and that aim into a mission statement, which actually is a short declaration of what that business is trying to achieve in the next 12 months. Um, if you're not sure about mission statements, you might want to go online and look up what the mission statement is for the Body Shop, for Nike, for Adidas, and John Lewis, because uh, it would be nice to secure the difference in your head between mission statements and objectives. Uh, this little test, which you probably learned at the beginning of year 10, is a, uh, what we call a SMART test. Uh, and if the business objective is not SMART, uh, it's not worth having it. SMART is an acronym. Uh, stands for, as I said on this slide, Pacific. Uh, can we actually see what that objective is geared for? Is it measurable in pound notes or percentages year on year? Is it achievable with the resources you've got? Uh, or is that factory not capable of doubling sales with the, uh, uh, people with the cash, with the equipment it has in that building? Is it realistic in terms of the calibre of people it's got and the number of people and their experience? And is it a uh, time frame? Will it happen in the next three, six, nine or twelve months? So, uh, a two mark question here. If the business objective is to survive, uh, you'd have to explain what survival means. Now, uh, if you're stuck on a desert island, survival is no more than uh, being still alive at the end of the twelve months that you've been put on there. And in business, it's no different. If your business is going to survive its first critical year, uh, that might be quite impressive if you've never done it before. Uh, it's quite important if it's your main income and job, but uh, for a new business, survival would be, for the first three, six, 12 months, a key objective uh, for any business. Uh, if it's going to keep going uh, after 12 months, because nine out of 10 fail, then that's an achievement in itself. Uh, other grain businesses might uh, default, like I said before, to survive should they hit rocky roads. Uh, but survival should be no more than a temporary objective. Survival is something that you get out of very quickly and focus on bigger and better things 
But if it's vital to survive, which it is at the start of the business, uh, that's quite a clear focus. Uh, you could have an energy mark question saying, what is the objective of break-even? Well, clearly, from uh, Unit 2 theory, you know that break-even is the difference uh, between a business, once you've got your fixed cost in there, and your sales revenue line in there, uh, your break-even point uh, is the difference between, actually I've got to notice the total cost, uh, the, the break-even point is the, the point at which a profit is either made or a loss made. So uh, a break-even point is exactly where you cover all your costs before you start making a profit. And that profit sector you know from unit two. But in terms of unit one, it will be only talked about in terms of an objective. So remember, if total revenue is greater than total cost, you're going to make a profit. If total cost is greater than total revenue, you'll make a loss. But if uh, total revenue equals total cost, you will have achieved that objective in year one. Uh, another two mark objective could be uh, what is to make a profit. Now you all know what that is. The profit objective is the main objective for most businesses because maximising profit is what allows you to have the fun doing other more exciting things. So we need to minimise costs and maximise sales if we're going to maximise profit. Uh, and that's a no-brainer because uh, maximising profit allows us to grow our business and do other things. Uh, it could be that you're uh, in the business exam looking at a case study where it's a lifestyle business a bit like the ultimate travel company in London, uh, where the people run it for their own benefit and their own lifestyle, and there's no pressure on them to grow sales, dividends for shareholders, uh, or uh, have greedy owners that want more profit every year. Uh, so this has not come up in the paper I've ever seen, but the word satisficing means that the owners of the company are satisfied that they're happy to do the same next year as they did last year, and they can live on that income or that profit. So if there's a two mark question on satisficing, that means no more than do the same as last year. They're happy to do the same, they're not aggressively looking to grow. Um, there are some companies or, or businesses that don't actually have a uh, target to uh, pursue profit. Uh, and if they ask you what a charity is, you will need to know that. Uh, they don't want to make profit because they're tax free, there's no corporation tax to pay on charities, but they are there to maximise their income and funds to support their projects. Um, the other two mark question here is what is a social enterprise? Uh, you should know that by now. It just tends to pop up now and again, uh, and it's quite topical at the moment. But social enterprises, again, don't make a profit, their target is to put all their funds to do something great with the local community. So the profits, if they were to make profits, would be directed into uh, community activities. So good examples of that could be a local tea shop making uh, funds available to provide food for homeless people, or even shelter for homeless people in the local community. Uh, a little exam tip, any, uh, on the OCR course, any key term that's highlighted in bold on the question paper will need a, from you uh, a definition. So if you see anything in bold, make sure you explain that in detail. So, um, it could be a, a business aim to manufacture or launch a new product. Uh, lots of companies do that every year, particularly Samsung, Apple and the likes are constantly bringing out a new generation phone uh, in their next financial year. If a company set an aim to manufacture and launch a new product, that would be a clear target, a clear aim for that company for the year, and behind that they would have lots of objectives to achieve that. Uh, it could be that a company has an aim to provide a new service, uh, like Apple are constantly bringing out new services. For instance, last year I think they brought out Apple Music, uh, and Apple Music is a profitable business because Apple is a business that's set up in the private sector for profit, and Apple Music is a very clever addition to their facility of providing us with services. Um, uh, and obviously the better the service, the more people join in. And if you look at Apple as a business model, they're very good at giving you stuff on a free trial basis. Uh, so you can try the new service, realise you can't live without the new service, 
and then you're uh, paying for the service until you're, uh, you've had enough of it, or potentially forever. Um, it could be, for a two-mark question, uh, you're looking at growing market share, or market share. Um, market share is quite an important part of growth, because it's, uh, it's seen as an obvious way to increase profits. It's particularly important for larger business, the PLCs, who are under pressure to give their shareholders a bigger share of their profit in terms of dividends. Uh, shareholders uh, are often greedy people that want more and more and more and actually make uh, things quite intolerable for people that work in organisations. But if you look at a clear target from a few years ago, uh, when Virgin Media, Richard Branson, got involved in uh, Superfast Broadband, uh, he had, uh, after his first two years in the market, no more than a 17-18% share in Superfast Broadband, and then he put his marketing campaign together with a few celebrities, and himself included, and within 12 months, he set himself a target to grow his market share. I think it even surprised himself it went from 17-18% to 56% in 18 months. But that's quite a clear target that grows uh, and drives everything in the business to make that happen. Um, just a little point here, that growth can come from different, different directions, a bit of a sideline mainly. Uh, growth can come from selling more products, the same products, or selling more uh, different new products. Uh, and that growth is sales growth, but it's also known as organic growth, if that's a two-mark question that comes up for you. You could also, as we've just been talking about, increase your market share from 10% uh, to 20%, which would be quite significant over a year. Uh, increasing market share, like sales growth, is another example of organic growth. Uh, but don't forget, the other form of growth comes from elimination of the competition. Uh, this is an instant growth when you buy... Uh, other people in the marketplace, so if uh, EE, they've just recently been bought at by BT for £13 billion, now BT have now got a bigger market share in the mobile phone business than they had before they bought EE. So if you want to grow your business quickly and you're very rich with cash, you can actually buy, merge and take over other companies and that's an instant growth, a good example of instant growth. Um, so we've talked about business objectives in the private sector, let's just quickly have a recap on uh, the private for profit sector, don't forget that includes sole traders, that includes uh, partnerships, private and public limited companies, uh, they're all owned by individuals rather than the government. Uh, and don't also forget that the private sector is actually made up of 85% small businesses in the UK, a significant amount of small business is, is, is chunking in the, the, the income and the jobs from the private sector. Uh, objectives are generally in the private sector centred around profit and growth. Uh, and don't forget also that profit is the reward that entrepreneurs get from taking the risks by setting up the business. So don't be embarrassed about profit. Profit is not a bad word. Profit is the reward for the risk. Uh, if we then flick across to the public sector, just a little recap there, uh, the public sector is generally running at a cost. So whatever the public sector is that you're running, whether it's education, uh, the government will give uh, education, I think it's roughly £113 billion a year, in the pot. And that pot is there to run all schools in the state sector in the UK. Uh, so anything run by central or local government is classed as a public sector at cost. Uh, and don't forget, there's lots of pots. There's a pot for uh, health, there's a pot for education, there's a pot for defence, uh, and there's a pot for welfare. And all those pots all add up uh, to roughly, um, I think in the UK PLC, all those pots add up to about £850 billion. Pounds. So that £850 billion pounds of pots are all parts of public sector expenditure that the government allocates. There's also another little pot uh, of public service corporations, uh, of which the BBC is one, and the BBC actually uh, is a separate pot of £3.5 billion pounds. Uh, just have the charts we need for the next 10 years. So for the next 10 years, 
the BBC will be given another £3.5 billion a year uh, to run, and that's another part public sector running at a cost. Clearly that's a big number, but the BBC is expected to do a lot with that. Um, sticking with public sectors for a little bit, uh, public sector objectives generally focus on service. So waiting times in health and, and doctors and hospitals, uh, getting great results, A class start to C in schools, and making sure that we're safe from all threats across the world, and making sure that people have this safety blanket where that if they can't afford to live, uh, we're helping them to get stable back on the ladder so they can actually then stand on their own two feet again. So public sector focuses on service delivery. And traditionally, uh, and even as a part, can get very sloppy in terms of service delivery. But the Conservative government is putting all these under a lot of pressure to uh, do less, do more, sorry, with less. Uh, and that part in each of those has been subject to probably 25% cut uh, over the last five years with more cuts on the way. So in the terms of making all that more efficient, uh, the Conservative government are driving efficiencies through austerity cuts uh, and hopefully improvements at the same time. But it's all it was a trade-off. Uh, I think uh, we've covered most of what's on that slide. Uh, there are often conflicts with the business objectives. If you're uh, lucky or unlucky enough to get a nine mark question on this, then this slide might be something worth looking at. Uh, some business objectives work well together and others don't. And I've put some examples on there. Uh, growth versus profit. Now growth is going to take cash out of your uh, profits uh, and reduce the profits as a result. So if you bought another company or you increase the factory, that would cost you money, which would come out of your profit. So if you're growing your business, your profits are going to be uh, down in the short term. Also, if you're growing your business, uh, BT is taking on EE, hopefully that doesn't mean to see the service in the EE go downhill. I've been experienced at EE shopping Tunbridge Wells at the weekend. I would say the service is world class in that store. But a small shop, or a small business probably can provide a better service to its customers than a big business because they are more in touch with their customers and can respond quicker. So as a business grows, it's important that it doesn't lose its service provision. And again, uh, service versus uh, profit. Uh, if a business is aiming to survive, uh, it's unlikely to have a profit focus because it's close to going under. Uh, but it could uh, eventually stabilise itself and then look at expansion and growth and maximising profits. So it's only going to do that if it's competitive, if it's got a good marketing mix, it's got good service levels, uh, and it can go from survival to profit very quickly. Uh, there are a couple more things that you might need to think about. Uh, being ethical and environmentally friendly is normally objectives that a business will take after four or five years. After four or five years, the business might decide to think, well, we're going to spend more time advertising our ethical and environmentally friendly approach. Being ethical and environmentally friendly is normally uh, a two-edged sword. People that like those qualities in the business will be loyal and supportive, but being ethical and environmentally friendly can also be a cost-saving initiative, which is uh, a benefit as well. Uh, and I would say it's a very brave business that starts off with those as ethical and environmental objectives, but there are some that do, like the organic shoe company Tom's uh, is one that comes to mind, and would you believe that when the body shop started, it started from day one to be ethical and environmentally friendly. So people that believe and value that, and they're generally older people, but a lot more younger people are doing that today, uh, is, uh, is a great way to start if you can set your stall out that high from the beginning. Uh, if you do set your stall out that high from the beginning, then um, people that share your similar values and beliefs uh, will actually uh, come and buy stuff off you to support you. So it can work for you if you're brave enough to start with that objective. But uh, you might need to spend a lot of money advertising and marketing that fact uh, from, from day one to make sure people know. And finally, uh, my top tips on the nine mark questions on this topic. Uh, to get the nine marks on an aims and objectives uh, question, 
you need to follow, uh, explain in detail why business has chosen to follow a particular objective at that stage of its development. So if we look at the product life cycle very quickly, in the time we've got left, we know that uh, there's a little curve there and the different stages of that product life cycle. For those nine mark questions, you might want to comment uh, about uh, how certain objectives might relate to the growth stage, the launch stage, the growth stage, uh, the maturation stage, the decline stage. Uh, and it might be that different objectives kick in at different stages. So if you can link that to the product life cycle, if you can't remember what that is, do a little refresh on that, then that's going to get you lots of nine marks in terms of your evaluation. Uh, and if you can also link um, the fact that different objectives are likely to change as other factors change, that will be quite important too. And when I say other factors, we're talking about factors outside the business uh, and they're the external factors. So as external factors kick in, that little PLC or LTD or sole trader uh, is going to be subject to things. And if you can't remember external factors, that little acronym there will help you. External factors really are no more than what's going on in politics, what's going on in the economy, what's going on socially in our society, what's going on with technology as it doubles in speed, what's going on with legislation, and what's going on in the environment. All hot topics as, uh, are constantly having an impact on, on these businesses and these businesses' aims and objectives. And I think that finishes off that slide, and our cameraman, who's fast asleep at the moment, he's just about to press pause.